next we have another very very interesting panel discussion coming your way uh, this is the ceo's boardroom where we shall hear about companies to drive positive change creating sustainable business strategy to moderate the session please welcome back to the stage mr sachin kota partner pair company can we give mr kota a warm welcome please and keep the applause going as we welcome our esteemed panelists for this session First up, please welcome Akhil Mehrotra, Managing Director, Pipeline Infrastructure Limited. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Vikram Gupta, Founder and Managing Partner, ID Cap Ventures Advisors Private Limited. Let's have a big hand, please, to Mr. Gupta. Please also welcome Gautam Khanna, Chief Executive Officer, Hinduja Hospital. Geeta Gurnani, Chief Technology Officer, Technical Sales Lead, IBM. Ladies and gentlemen, keep that applause going, please. And last but definitely not least, Sanjeev Dugal, Managing Director, NT, uh, Managing Director, NTPC GE Power Services Limited. A warm welcome to all our panelists. Handing the stage over to you, Mr. Koda. Thank you, and uh, thank you for entertaining me again. Uh, I'm not going to do any small trick here at this point in time because was super my main chal raha tha presentation nahi aa raha tha I do some other stuff okay very interesting topic i find the panel is a very interesting one you know there is no common pattern in this panel right and very interesting mix right because when we talk about sustainability there are different stakeholders and what this panel has actually has different stakeholders we have an investor you know uh, here we have service providers after them and we also have business operators and everyone is trying to approach the sustainability from a very different angle to create i think you know i know we are 40 minutes we are to be efficient and we put a clock at 25 i don't know why but okay uh but we are 40 minutes that's what i'm assuming uh so let's talk about sustainability and we started talking in the morning and we said it's a great topic everyone wants to run sustainable businesses everyone wants to sell sustainable products everyone wants to invest in sustainability it is a topic for next 20 years but when you actually look at the reality you see there is a bit of a challenge that happens right there is a challenge in terms of the business cases the economics the challenge in the consumer front there are challenges in terms of actually making things happen as world if we talk about energy transition the social impact and the governance we are way behind our aspirations right and maybe it's actually and there is no one energy transition or one social impact and governance that needs to be defined for the world the story in india is very different the story for the developed world is very different and the story for rest of the world is very different there are different energy transitions happening there are different governance challenges being faced so as i start thinking about this entire topic sustainability where i wanted to start thinking about thing that what are the real boardroom challenges and issues that are there right what actually happens in your boardroom because you talk about this topic every day right so what's your perspective so maybe gotta you want to start and then maybe akhil you want to add to that so right. thank you chen for this uh, question now you know uh, i run a hospital so we have couple of hospitals so one of the discussions is that we want to do the right thing so right thing means either what we want to do for example in a hospital I'll give you an example that uh, in the operation theater there are a lot of gases used for anesthesia so can you do something about it or there is so much waste in it can you do something about waste management and so on so a lot of things are concerned and and when you start taking action some of them i think we discussed before earlier we were discussing some of them may seem that it is an expensive proposition i mean for example if you have to put a uh, you know ehp and stp plants in, in the hospital and you have a biomedical waste management system and then when we replace the gases in the anesthesia it's going to cost money the challenge in the discussion rooms in the boardroom is the patient doesn't know about it 
patient doesn't care about it, patient is not willing to pay for it. Because as far as patient is concerned, for them, hospital A is equal to hospital B is equal to hospital C in terms of many of these things, because they don't see it. So that is one challenge. Second is that even if we decide to do something, who are the people who will drive it? And uh, in the healthcare industry, although healthcare organizations worldwide have pledged to make it net zero, yeah. but there are not too many people who understand and implement it. For example, I'm going to close with this, is that we had led, uh, I don't know whether some of you know this, we led the country in becoming the first green OT in the country. So green, then you got a certification uh, from Bureau of Directors for uh, green and clean OT, and then green and clean hospital. So, so once we did that, I don't think the patients, uh, you know, had any, I mean, there's a little bit of reputation increase. But because of this, the other hospitals started following us just to, you know, foam. So that drove the transition in the industry. So let me just stop at that and wait for it. I think a uh, very interesting point you're making, out, right? One is, and we'll talk about the customer's willingness to pay, right, as we talk about. Because we have other service providers also to talk about that. And the other is the sustainability because there's a fear of missing out, right? That's the big driver of sustainability. Uh, you know, Vikram, if I were to take your answer, you talk to many of the founders, what is the real pitch that they make to you and what is their script? So, uh, we do series A investments. Uh, we take 20-30% stakes in companies, we take active board positions. We have a portfolio of about 40 plus companies. We manage about 4,500 crores of domestic capital. Mostly institutions, 70% institutional capital. And when you're, most of the institutions are themselves now actually subscribing to this whole philosophy of sustainability and very proactively actually working towards that. So they are LPs in our mind. Now, uh, you know, since we are coming at very early stage in these companies, you know, at that stage, the founders are still figuring out the product market fit. They're trying to build a, you know, a plan which is actually showing that they want to be the largest in the segment. And there's a lot of business focus and the product focus and they're, you know, trying to establish that the customer segment they're focusing on is actually large enough. Now, what Gautam said is actually very important. So, we talked, gave the example of the, the patient actually doesn't care about, you know, uh, what kind of uh, green products you're using or not using as long as you're giving them the right outcome that they're looking for, you know, uh, they're okay with it. But I think the biggest issue that we see on the, on the consumer side is the, one is the awareness. Awareness is a big issue. Other is this perception of, you know, the cost attached to it in terms of trying to become sustainable. There is a huge cost which will get added for no reason, therefore it's going to impact your returns. You know, from an investor perspective, one may start thinking that, oh, another cost is going to get added, therefore your next on valuation is going to get impacted. I think I have actually seen the other side. In fact, I was uh, in London, met a family office about four and a half billion dollars. They were showing me their portfolio of 250 companies. 40 companies were SDG compliant, sustainable development goals, and the rest of them were not. The SDG compliant portfolio was 27% higher. The rest was 70%. So my perception changed completely that, you know, it's not about sustainability versus returns. In fact, what uh, I started doing a lot of research after that, met the uh, SDG architect of United Nations at Davos 2020. And I was blown away by the whole concept that it actually helps improving your returns. So it's, it's a lot about, you know, following certain principles, certain uh, culture in your organization. And I think there's a lot of alignment with actually creating a lot of value. The customers, if you create the awareness in their minds, they may be willing to pay for it. The same patient, if you told them that, you know, this is actually going to overall impact a lot of other things, you know, there, there is a chance that there's a segment of customers, you know, those patients which are willing to pay for that green voting. So I think uh, it's a lot about awareness, you know, also about, uh, you know, positioning properly and making sure that you are actually doing the right things and, you know, both top down and bottom down. Very interesting and I think we'll keep on touching about this whole willingness to pay angle as we talk about it, right? And you are using the investor lens 
he is trying to have a product which has a direct consumer. But let's talk to the people who are trying to sell both of you, to both of you, right? To saying that. So, Geeta, what's your view, right? Because you're trying pitching your products to customers with a sustainability hat. How do you think about it? Yeah, so I think first I tell that what does I really sell, right, to the customers? <laughs> and it's not a sales pitch, but it's just that I think what we're trying to do from a sustainability technology embedding, let me put it that way, that how do you really leverage technology to stay sustainable, stay true to your goals and strategy, right? What you are trying to what you're trying to do. So I think what I see, and I, first of all, I'm like really glad that we, this is a boardroom conversation now, right? This is no more a CSR agenda, let me put it that way. It, there was a point in time when this was a CSR agenda, but now it's a business agenda, and it's a boardroom discussion, right? I think there are five things which we are trying to help customers, and those are the conversations which are happening with the customers. The first part is the strategy and goaling. Think that what's your strategy and what's your goal as you get towards uh, get towards the sustainability part of it, and how are you thinking holistically every part, every department, and every part of your supply chain, right? Because you can't achieve that green OT what you spoke about or anything else unless you have a very strong supply chain and stakeholders which are supporting you in doing that, right? So I think the step one is strategy, how you do. The second, and I think I love this uh, quote from our CEO, who says that, do you really benchmark, do you really know that today in your organization, every part of your business, what's their baseline of sustainability? This is where are they today? You could be completely, let's say, at, at organization level, you are at X level, but do you know where are the inefficiencies? at every step in your organization, right? So, the second thing we are trying to have conversation is the benchmarking part, saying that how do you benchmark your scope one, scope three, every type of possible emission, and there is a technology now available which helps you do the scope three emission through some derivative methods, let me put it that way, right? You do that. Third, I think three areas which we identify as the greatest contributor to the carbon emission, let me put it that way. So one is infrastructure, right? Any infrastructure you look at, different, uh, whether it's hospital, whether it's airport, whether it's railways or whatever, I think they're the biggest contributor from a carbon emission standpoint. So how do you do a better asset management? And I think most of us would have faced with it when you were coming to this hotel, I think we spent like 20 minutes outside, just take a turn, right? Now imagine like what's the fuel part of it we are talking about and what infrastructure planning has been done to, to do this part, right? The second one, uh, since I come from IT, I think everybody in this room has IT today, right? So I highly encourage everybody to think about green IT. That, because that's a very clear thing to get to very quickly, that are you a green IT from that perspective? And third biggest component is supply chain, right? Saying that how do you keep optimizing your supply chain so that you are able to reduce the carbon footprint, right? So I'll just summarize five areas which we are working with the customers. I will not say too many takers right now. The takers are in pockets right now. So strategy, benchmarking, supply chain, green IT, and infrastructure optimization. Those are like five areas of work. No, interesting. And I was actually synthesizing what you know, Gautam Vikram and you said. Very interesting, right? To cover, if I had to make a sales pitch, right? Or a pitch to any customer saying that how do you think about it? One, definitely there are segments of customers who are going to pay for a green product, right? That's what Gautam you know, spoke about. It. Two, there is a fear of missing out. Three, you need to talk to the right stakeholders in the company, right? It's the board agenda, you need to ensure you involve the CXOs beyond this, you know, chief security officer. Then you said about, you know, at least put a baseline. And the big issue is people don't know where they stand, so you actually make it real for them. And the fifth thing I kind of got down in the same pitch is to say, as you think, think about quick wins at all points in time. So when you think about any project, you know, 
the sustainability projects are very really similar. There are going to be quick wins, right? So there's going to be that you have five things from the three comments of your way. But Sanjay, you wear both the hats, right? You wear a G hat, which is the technology provider, you wear an NTPC hat, which is an operator. You actually have been on both sides of the table. So how do you look at this debate as well? I think if you look at the power industry, which is again at least in India one of the biggest contributors of uh, CO2, almost 50% of the CO2 in the country is coming because of the power sector. Uh, look, a lot of things have changed in the last uh, five to seven years. To be very frank, I think probably if you were sitting here seven years back, we would have never realized uh, in terms of economics, solar can compete with coal, right? So many of these technologies which uh, were not economically viable, they were supported by the government, AP tariffs a little bit earlier. And then the scale came up and because of that they are economically viable now. So again, in terms of technology, there are a lot of things which are available right now which can help. Uh, one, solve the problem of uh, uh, climate change and second, also economically they uh, could be very, very competitive. I think we are investing now in uh, batteries, I mean, again, look at the scale of batteries, which the cost of batteries, what they were five years back, seven years back. So, look, sustainability is something which everybody has to work on, which now I think more or less everybody needs to Economics, it falls into place that they want to get to scale. And we have seen that in many of the technologies that, that uh, with the scale uh, and the initial rate of government support. I think it, it makes economic sense to invest in uh, these products which uh, are sustainable and again help you uh, achieve in terms of each and every company around what are their goals are. So I think things have moved a lot and I think uh, to be very frank with hydrogen and some other technologies which uh, the global uh, companies are investing in. Uh, there are going to be solutions which are going to be economically viable. They might not look right now, but uh, with all the investment coming in, I think they are going to be. Very interesting. I, keep on, I will keep on adding to my list, right? I had five things, I will add six and seven, right? Because that creates a script for us to say, okay, how will this happen, right? So six points which I had taken from what you said is technology will keep on evolving. So if you don't start investing in technology or experimenting or playing with it today, you may find you know it has evolved five years down the line and miss the bus. So there's no option but to kind of start at least investing, engaging on that. And the seventh point at least for me that is to say government will play a role. So either you strengthen your policy advocacy levels or even at least be involved because it's a race between government which is happening and you need to play with that. So I keep on letting it. There's seven learnings I've taken. We we'll 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 add three more as we go through it. And you know, we always talk about sustainability. As you said, things will happen, right? So there is so much opportunity there as businesses, right? So one way is there was a compliance lens that we used to use, kind of which we used to use, right? Which is a defense. Can we play a lot more offense, right? You know, we talked about new business, what is an investment. Customers willing to pay, you said technology, government, there will be evolution as well. So there are several business opportunities that are there. If I think about today sitting here, in your existing businesses, what are some of the interesting things that you can do? So maybe actually you want to talk about because your business is impacted the most, right? Like since your business is impacted the most through this sustainability change. So, so I come from a business which is facility, as we discussed in COP28. So, uh, and again, good thing is that I think the global south, as we say, has registered this commitment to move away from fossil fuels because we all realize that at least for the next two to three decades, we need fossil fuels to transition to a, a kind of a greener energy. Uh, if I talk of gas, it is much more cleaner than fossil fuel chain where I represent myself in transport gas. We are doing multiple things, and, and if we talk of uh, into our panelist. One thing is, uh, there are a lot of uh, processes in our uh, transportation system for pipeline which we are trying to decarbonize. So, like we do surveys, we do now we use helicopters, now we use drones, uh, 
so I'm using technology now to kind of reduce my carbon footprint in a big way. And that's good business sense. And said, what is the role in the discussion? So that's saying that we can be sustainable. So we do a continuous energy audit and say, okay, there's no methane emission. The methane is much more uh, dangerous than carbon dioxide. So, so we have ensured that in a pipeline there is almost zero methane emission. So if we can do that, I think we become more sustainable. Our carbon footprint reduces. Because we will continue with fossil fuel for some time. So what we can do is get green. Then there is a quantum leap on two areas. One is complete technological shift. Uh, moving away from gas, which will take huge investments. And that's the discussion which happened in the past that okay, who will fund it. And that's where it comes, because these funding will be huge, and then uh, the whole discussion is, does government provide some kind of a media to the whole energy sector to move away quickly, or we wait for two to three decades to transition slowly. Now only time will get us. But another thing we are doing is, which is in our hand, uh, is hydrogen. Now, uh, all of you would know that hydrogen is the fuel of future, and I firmly believe it will be much more predominant than the five years down the line. Because that's where you get clean energy from. India is blessed with solar, so you can use solar, use electrolyzers to uh, produce hydrogen, and then that can be transported. Uh, what we need is an ecosystem, which I'm saying will take at least five years, because one, the cost of production of hydrogen needs to be brought down. And that will happen on its own as we discussed through scale through new manufacturing facilities happening in India. The cost will come to one third in five years' time. Once that happens, we are ready as a pipeline to blend hydrogen with methane. So that will help reduce my carbon footprint much further. And also, we have users like uh, a lot of testing happening on power plants, refineries, where a blended product can be used. So, a so, lot of work we have done. I have partnered with. Uh, Designed for hydrogen. That's why a lot of testing is happening in the world. But uh, we are at an initial stage, and all this makes excellent business sense. We bring down the cost for my uh, consumers why we need carbon like this. So, a certain portion at once is good in the sense. But there are some quantum leaps which will require some assistance, and we are not talking today, but we will spend a lot of time on that, how we go in details on that. No, great. I think Thanks, Akhil, for letting me finish my 10 point agenda. Uh, because you added three more points, right? Uh, one, which you talked about that there is so much opportunity to use newer solutions in your existing efficiency improvement of business propositions. Right? So it's not that sustainability is that one big thing that I need to do, but there are so many of those small, small initiatives that I can take in my existing businesses, which are economically viable as well. Second, you talked about how you're using hydrogen building an optionality for the future, saying that as a business, I have a core business, but I need to start thinking about an optionality of the future. And it's like a portfolio that I will create, right, as I go forward. And third, you touched upon saying that, yes, but, you know, I need not do it alone. There are partnerships I need to get into. Right, you mentioned about your partnership that you're kind of building in. So at least I could add three things, right? There, is, there are many small initiatives in existing businesses. There is an optionality or a portfolio that I need to create into my business starting today. And third is I need to start thinking about partnerships. And that is, you know, you know, between four, you know five years you created a 10 point agenda. It's already for me. So great. Yeah. No, but Gautam, you know, you started touching about initially also about the small, small initiatives that in your hospitals you're starting. Can you just give a few more examples of that? So, uh, I And I just want to add that. Uh, when we discuss this in the boardroom, the, one of the issues is if we start talking about ESG, SDG, then many people will not understand. The, what you start with the performance of the uh, you know organization, whether it's a PNL, and say link it to cost reduction or efficiency increase, etc., or revenue increase in the short term or long term, that people will understand that there will be a dip in the short term or long term. So if you can align everything around that. And many of these initiatives are actually cost reducing. An example I give you is, uh, you know, in a hospital, one of the biggest uh, expenditure is on electricity. The other is paper. So you have multiple paper copies for everything. So 
Now, how can we reduce the electricity consumption? You do the energy audit, you do all the LED, etc., etc., and then you figure out that the chiller is a problem. And the chiller is a problem now to manage the chiller. Now there are solutions where you are increasing the efficiency of chillers by, you know, better software. Yours, but better software management, and that has reduced the energy consumption of the children. So, but suddenly it has reduced. Things like MRIs, which use helium. Now, we, we are, earlier I used to think helium was the problem, helium is everywhere. But there is a problem with helium, now you can't get it. So, that product has to be replaced in the next four or five years. So, when you take a decision on an expensive you think whether it's going to last me five, seven years. And the third thing I was saying is that, you know, there is always a choice between uh, digitization versus not digitization. And I think many times you will find that at least for now, digitization is better in terms of uh, environment, in terms of long term uh, uh, ramifications. And uh, I think with, with all this and some more examples, I think we want to write in time, uh, there will be. Uh, Movement towards long term. Because I think what you said is there are so many new solutions that are emerging, right? Whether in terms of the helium or whether in terms of the chiller or the network or the software and all, right? What are the solutions? Because there will be the big corporates, but there will also be so many of those startups that suddenly, you know, are coming to. In fact, my belief is the next big chunk of unicorns is going are going to be from the whole energy tech, climate tech, sustainable tech kind of world. And because I know I'm trying to, you know, I, I keep on thinking your side in conversation, but I think that's the reality. If you want to throw a bit of light on the that, what are the opportunities even as new business You know, purely from the funding perspective, uh, you rightly said, you know, uh, climate tech is a big area, right? I mean, if, if I announce that I'm raising a climate tech fund, I can tell you that I can raise a billion dollars. Just for the theme of the climate tech fund, there, there are enough investors sitting out there willing to support the whole thesis. I think the challenge is finding the underlying opportunity to actually really, you know, uh, the real climate tech opportunity. And I think the, the challenge comes from the fact that, you know, uh, some of these investments are really much longer term than what the investors typically look for. And I think the government has a big role in my view. Because the government capital actually much longer term than a VC or a B, uh, you know, investment. And I think some of these examples that I've just heard, uh, whether it's a chiller example or a, a drone versus a helicopter example, uh, I think these are very interesting examples. But when you actually look at the viability of some of these things, you know, and you look at a short term uh, window, you will see that you know, the commercial viability may not necessarily make sense. So you have to make investments. And somebody's only looking at you know, those reporting in the boardrooms, you start asking the first number, you ask the top line, bottom line, you know, the growth, etc. So when you see that those numbers are not moving on a, on a quarter to quarter basis, you know, these, come, these things come much later that, you know, why you invest in these things. But I think it's all about the perspective, you know, what's the time duration of the impact you're looking at. Are you looking at a quarterly impact, or an annual impact, or a five year, or a 20 year? And I think you know, one has to remind you when you're looking at an impact, look at a much longer measure, and then start drilling it down to how you're actually tracking towards that over a longer period. Oh, very interesting. Uh, uh, what I would like to do is, you know, against the UVO, UVO, both the hats, right? And we were going to try to innovate. Just maybe in 30 seconds, what is that one message that you want to leave with the audience that I should take away? Well, the, the critical thing is, like I'm talking from a power sector point of view, it could transition from thermal, predominantly medium, and 75% electricity coming from there to renewable. But that's still going to take 20 years. And you need to thermal asset, there are technologies which are available, you can make it cleaner. SOX can be reduced by 95%, efficiency can improve by 10, 15, 20%, uh, which will reduce the CO2 by the same amount. So I think there is. Uh, we need to look at one, what do we do with the existing assets which we have in the country, can we make it uh, more sustainable while we are developing the new technology. So we need to have a balance, we cannot ignore A versus B because I think the transition in India, especially in the next century, it will take probably 15 20 years. 
before we have, at least in the power sector, uh, where we have uh, renewable coming in a big way. So, again, technologies are available to reduce SOX, emissions, CO2, NOx, PN, uh, and also help renewable integration. So, I think my comment is invest in both uh, while we have this energy transition. Interesting. And I think you want to build on that because it would be a similar situation. My message would be that one, uh, for industry to take this as an opportunity rather than a threat. That's one uh, very important aspect because there are small things we can do as an industry to decarbonize and move forward. Uh, and there are technological solutions coming up. Now, some may be viable, some may not be viable today. As we say, when we take these decisions, we take these decisions for long term now. And then, for example, if my equipment, certain uh, equipment are 10, 15 years old and we are upgrading them, then we take the opportunity and the cycle to upgrade them to a version which is sustainable. So I think that's where I think the older industry needs to look at. You may not invest now or tomorrow just because we have to become sustainable, but there will be a cycle for that uh, hardware or software to be upgraded where we definitely make it sustainable. And that opportunity we should take. Two, uh, the second message I want to give is, I'm not a fan of saying, okay, my company will become net zero by 2050. But we discuss in board room, what is there we can do for the next 12 months, two years, three years, and achieve that. Those small steps are very important. Once we move towards that, we definitely move towards it. Awesome. I think, I think you, got, you had five ideas that you laid out, but I think you have a few more to be added. So, one last message from you and then it goes. Yeah, so, I think the last message at least to the CEOs is that break the silos. I think every organization is operating a lot in silo right now. So, break the silo and that's the accountability I truly believe is with CEO right now. Take that leadership position and break silo and then operationalize sustainability. Not leave it to the, to the one single goal, but have what should I say, micro goals to really get to that part. No, awesome. I think when I started my earlier session, I started with saying, why do you need slides? What she's saying is, forget slides, get into action. Thank you, everyone, for being a nice audience. Thank you, sir. Thank you to our moderator, Ms. Koda, as well as each of our panelists. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them another round of applause, please. Thank you, uh, Ms. Akhil Mehrota, Vikram Gupta, Kothu Khanna, Ms. Sita Gurunani, and Ms. Sanjeev Dugal. We appreciate you taking time out to join us here today and share your thoughts and insights with us.